How does the funding go in some of those universities you've talked about? Because, yes, you've got federal universities here funded by government, and uh, they talk about autonomy. You've got the private ones. What's the structure that you've seen across the world? Okay, I, I think before I uh, <laughs> get to that, let me just summarize the, the whole lecture issue. I think humans create systems. Leaders with visions create systems. And then the system then guide other humans who come into the system. Essentially, the point I was trying to make is that our lecturers, the people in the system at the moment, have got to come together and say, are we really delivering education? What is the quality of education we are delivering? With, with the limited resources we have, what changes can we put in place? At the moment, as much as I know, a great proportion of Nigerian lecturers are more interested in their pockets than they are. You did you do any um, research that takes uh, I, 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 I've just run a workshop for 300 university students last week, you know, uh, at the University of Benin. And it's anecdotal, but I studied in the system as well. As a matter of fact, before I left the system, I used to fight some of these lecturers. So I think we need to come together. And, you know, in some sense, in those days, we could understand, in the days of, the, in the military days, we could understand that lecturers are not well paid, they were starved. But now, the average lecturer, I think, earns something that's cost considerably okay. And so we now need to come together and say, hey, how can we build quality university, a quality university system in Nigeria? How can we ensure that the student, for whose uh, reason or purpose we are here, gets quality education? How can we treat them as partners in education? Talking about funding, of course, the government has got to support uh, uh, government universities. Of course, the government universities need to continue to get funding from, from, from the government. But what I said earlier is that funding should be competitive. If universities are going to get funding from the government, it should be based on the, on the basis of, 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 of performance. Do you see any, any problem with the students? Because if we talk about some lecturers being lazy, uh, what about the students? Uh, at least uh, most of the lecturers were once students. You were once a student. So how can you go about uh, having maybe a student who, in the first place, wasn't uh, supposed to be in the university? And which system allowed that student into the university? Mm -hmm. And of course, the whole problem goes down. It, you have to trace it upstream. It doesn't start from the university. It starts from high school. It starts from uh, secondary school. I think my problem, I, I'm, I'm stressing the issue of lecturers, not because I want to you know, just hit them or whatever, uh, because we're talking about the university education. If we're talking about uh, the Senate or, or the arms of government will be probably talking about uh, the politicians. Now we're talking about universities. So let's talk about the people who run the system. You know, if we go to high, if we go to our high school system, the problem is the, the, the problem is still the same. It's, it's, it's a human element. I think if the system is going to change, it's humans that are going to change it. What is the quality of school leavers that we produce from our secondary schools? What is the quality of school leavers that we produce from our secondary schools? Again, I haven't done any objective research, but probably you would agree with me, almost Nigerians would agree with me, that the quality is not, is not, it's not competitive. I don't know if our school leavers can, of course, the, the good thing about Nigerians is that we're very hardworking, we're driven, we're dogged, you know, but the system really doesn't bring out the potential within us. So you hear of Nigerians who travel overseas now and then, and they have done, they've done very well in their respective countries. But when we take national statistics, I do not think the quality of school leavers that we are producing Com can compare to what is obtainable in, in India, in Japan, in the United Kingdom, or, or other developed countries. What happens in this country, I was speaking to somebody who, who I was speaking to someone yesterday, <coughs> someone who happens to be related to me, you'll be amazed. You know, the person wants to uh, go for higher education into the university, she wants to be a nurse, and I said, okay, let's see what your results look like. The person passed all our subjects in, 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 in the YIC exams. Lo and behold, I said to the person, can you please uh, write for me what I'm going to detect for you now. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. This person has got a credit in English. She's got a credit in biology. She cannot spell diffusion. That's an indictment on the system. So the problem doesn't just start from the university. It's a little upstream. And what's the problem? It's corruption. It's a human factor. It's, it's the people who drive the system. So can it, can, it, can it be remedied? It can be remedied. Of, of course it can be remedied. But we need leaders who are going to 
who are going to face the problem and really be interested in solving it. Are we, we talking need, about political leadership now, or no, the leaders should also come from the uh, amongst the lecturers? Because you talked about the teachers. Are we talking about the teachers? I think I think I think leadership is leadership is not only the people at the top. Is the leadership is not only the president or the go the president of the country or the governor of the state, but of course that's pivotal. That's very, very core. That's core in terms of directing the national behavior of, of, of the country. But however, when I talk about leadership, I think I talk about people in power. The, you know, the, the the commission of education, the permanent secretaries, and the technical the, the the technical board and the rest of them. I think we've got to sit together and we've got to come together and say, hey, we are in the 21st century. This is 2012. Why are we lying to ourselves? Okay. Why are we lying to our, our, our students? So th essentially we need people who are going to solve. By the time you start arresting corrupt teachers or sacking corrupt teachers who take money to pass students or lecturers, I think you begin to show some sense of seriousness in solving the human problem and of, uh, we have in our educational uh, system. But of course you cannot do that yeah. if you yourself do not feel you have the moral well, uh, granted the, the teachers uh, lecturers have got to play their part but yep. uh, they don't exist in isolation they exist within the system yep. so if there's a challenge with the system they've got to also fix that holistically well yes we talked about lecturers but is there an undue emphasis on the, the, the kinds of education people get in terms of uh, certification because I mean when you go to school there's a lot of emphasis not just even before you go uh, emphasis on what you get out of it in terms of your paper qualification contrary to the technical colleges nobody seems to be paying attention to some of them but we know in some countries out there there's a lot of emphasis on technical education yep. polytechnic some of them yep. rank topmost yep. even beyond some universities out there yeah yep. how do we get back to this stage i i, I think that we we're a country that's a certificate crazy you know, we put a lot of emphasis on certificates, and we, we talk about outcome-based education, but the truth of the matter is we, we, our focus is not on the outcome. We don't put, foc we, we, our focus is not on the skills, and that's again where leadership is needed, where, where the Ministry of Education needs to come together and say what kind of, what, what gap, that's what, that's what I was talking about earlier when I talked about the gap between the industry need, between industry needs and the certificates that we give to people. We need to come together and say in which areas are we lacking, what technical, uh, how, how are technical colleges doing, how are technical institutions doing, what, uh, what what, what, what skills does the country need in terms of the current, the, the, where we find ourselves today? A, a few years ago, uh, America went crazy about pr uh, uh, producing programmers and people who were savvy in IT and computing and engineering. Uh, I think we need to sit back and ask ourselves, what vocational skills does the country need, first of all, and then set such institutions in place and then motivate young people to acquire technical skills like there's a South African Institute of Plumbing, the South African Institute of uh, Painting, you know, so people can go into such technology, uh, such schools, uh, acquire technical skills and then be relevant in, in, in the country. So at the moment, it's not exactly rocket science. We can just make these changes gradually and take it to the bigger stage. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and if, if you've listened, that's, that's why I haven't, I have, I haven't focused on infrastructure, on policies, on these things that sound rocket science or scientific. My issue has always been the people who run the system. And these people are the ones who become the ministers tomorrow. They're the ones who become the commissioners. They're the ones who become the presidents. So we need, it was Abraham Lincoln who said, that the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will become the philosophy of the government in the next. Let, let me take a little uh, extension from what Alima said because the students have a role to play here. Yeah. It wasn't perfect when we went to school also. Uh, absolutely. But because we decided to apply ourselves yeah. beyond what we were being taught. Yeah. And then we could make some success. Well, I, I, I totally agree. And that's, why, that's where my organization, Beyond Tomorrow, comes